Hello and welcome to today's webinar. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to join me today as we explore the restaurant digital marketing trends in 2023. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Dawn Gribble, an award-winning freelance digital marketing strategist and consultant with over 20 years of experience specialising in hospitality, food service and F&B internationally. Today I'll be covering the main digital trends and social media behaviours we can expect this year. The video replay and slide deck will be available to download at the end of today's session. So please use the networking area for comments and questions, which we'll go through during the Q&A. We also have a quiz, so make sure that you have your pen and notepad handy and we'll see who has the highest scores at the end. At the end of today's session, you should leave with an understanding of the direction you need to take your content in and how to effectively engage your diners. So with that being said, let's jump in. As you can see from today's agenda, we're going to have a look at all of the major social media channels, as well as uh, what you can do on Google Maps, your website and your newsletter. And we'll be wrapping up with some tips on how you can deliver an omni-channel experience to your diners, followed by some key takeaways, the quiz answers and a Q&A. 2023 is shaping up to be a year of major shifts in marketing trends. The most notable include the rise of uh, short form video, new content formats and creator collaborations. Live streaming has helped brands take fan interaction to a new level last year, and we're expected them, expecting them to become even more popular in 2023 as a way to main, maintain brand relevance and authenticity on social media. It's clear from the success of live video initiatives that consumers want to see the faces behind their favourite companies, and live sessions on platforms such as TikTok, Instagram and Facebook can help your restaurant increase brand engagement, follow account and encourages, encourage shoppers, uh, sorry, customers to take actions live. So this year, social media content uh, will also be based on a mix of um, augmented reality and virtual reality. Those are two areas that are expected to continue to gain traction. Uh, and in fact, a growing number of brands are using augmented reality to promote their new products. Now, restaurants can use AR uh, to promote dishes and they can use virtual reality to promote venues. Um, furthermore, there's been a, a rapid increase um, in online shopping, particularly amongst uh, millennials and Gen Z purchasers. So first of all, we'll have a look at what's going on with Facebook. So Facebook remains the sort of number one largest social media channel uh, with 2.8 billion active users worldwide. So this provides a great opportunity for restaurants to tap into this immense marketing potential. Now, according to Facebook, there are more than 10 million restaurant pages on the platform with over 60 million people actively engaging with them each month. And as you can see, uh, you know, users are sort of spending a good half an hour a day on the platform and around 67 percent of people will visit a local business page once a week or more. So it's a great way for you to engage your local communities. Facebook has added a number of new features that can be used to engage diners. Uh, and that includes the ability, obviously, to create event, events and hold video parties. Uh, we've also seen the introduction of shoppable posts, uh, which allow customers to directly purchase pro products from the restaurant's Facebook page. Um, and additionally, restaurants can use Messenger to communicate with customers and provide sort of more one-to-one -one customer support. So with the watch parties, for example, this is where you could have like a chef special or a masterclass and the party would allow your community to watch the video along with you so that you can have a chat live as everything's going on. A little bit like we're doing this morning. Um, another really great tool that's been introduced is the ability to directly message people that leave comments on Facebook. So this is super useful um, if anybody's got a complaint um, or a question. 
community groups are starting to see quite a bit of resurgence in use, uh, particularly around local communities. So um, you do actually have the option now to join community groups as your page. That will depend on the uh, permissions for each group, though. Um, also start looking at how you can use custom audiences. So this is um, if, for example, you collect emails from your customers when they sign up for your newsletter, these can be uploaded to Facebook as a custom audience, which allows you to market to your existing customers directly. Um, you should also be taking advantage of the AI chatbots to provide answers to questions out of hours. Um, and also there's a growing number of people who prefer their customer support in a sort of self-service, if you like. So these are really helpful there. Recently, Facebook's added um, a royalty-free music library. So this uh, is where you can find some great sounds to jazz up your videos. And uh, we're also seeing the new feature that allows you to direct people to your WhatsApp. Now, this is the preferred channel of communication for users mainly over the ages of 24 to 35. And it has a platform penetration rate of 84% within that age group. Um, whereas users over 65 have a penetration rate of 78%. So WhatsApp is absolutely essential if you want to offer good customer service to your diners. Um, and finally, uh, Facebook's introduced a more sort of streamlined inbox where you can manage uh, your customer comments, uh, keep an eye on any collaborations with influencers, handle complaints, answer questions, and of course, go through your job applicants. So in the past year, Facebook has introduced a number of new features to the platform and that includes the ability to post 3D photos. Um, and really, when you're looking at your 3D photos, it's not just the interiors that you can use them for. It's also your dishes as well so that people can get a 360 view um, of what you're doing. And, and particularly with some of the dessert platters uh, that I've seen um, that are coming out onto sort of tables across the world, these would work really, really well for 3D photos. Uh, there's also message reactions so that you can sort of contextually reply to people with emojis. And of course, there's the options to post content to a story. So restaurants can use all of these different features um, to find ways to sort of post content that's more engaging and more interactive. So um, interactive content tends to engage diners. So that's where you want to make the most of posting polls, surveys and uh, contests as well. Now, I touched briefly on the custom audiences, which is where you upload a spreadsheet of email addresses um, to your Facebook ads account. Now, once those are uploaded, what Facebook's al algorithm can then do is create what's called a lookalike audience. So it finds other people on the platform that have got similar behaviors to your existing audience. So this is a great way of finding new targeted people. Um, and it's also the time this year to get very granular with your um, advertising. So do look at what you can do in terms of gluten free options, vegan options um, and perhaps what students would prefer versus families for example the more granular you can get the more experiments you can run you'll start hitting those sweet spots with customer groups and then of course you can start scaling your marketing um, content okay so we're on to question one of the quiz so in 2021 over 4.26 billion people were using social media worldwide. What number do you think that's projected to reach by 2027? Is that 5 billion, 5.5 billion, or 6 billion? So in 2021, it was 4.26 billion what, uh, of people using social media and projected to reach which number by 2027? 5 billion, 5.5 billion, or 6 billion? So it's essential for restaurants to optimise their Instagram profile for greater impact in 2023. And we can see from the statistics why that's so important. So being a visual first platform, 
We all know that people eat with their eyes first. Um, This is well placed to serve restaurant customers. So there's 2 billion monthly active users on the platform, of which 34% are aged between 25 and 34, 31% are aged between 18 and 24, and 16% aged 35 to 44. Now, visual data is processed so many more times faster than um, text by the brain. So it's really important to make sure that your images are on point. Um, And in fact, some of the uh, most Instagram food, uh, the most popular is pizza. Then we're also looking at sushi, steak, uh, burgers as well. And don't forget your interiors. Now, in 2022, 72.9% of businesses were using Instagram to market their products and services. And that figure is actually expected to grow to over 80% in 2023. So if you're not already on this platform, you need to be. So Instagram has recently introduced a direct message button, uh, which is great because that's going to help you get more messages um, on your organic posts and reels and encourage people to get in touch with you. Uh, You can, of course, now schedule your posts, stories and reels from either the app or the website. And you can put links into stories. Now there is a caveat on this. So if you're adding a link, a swipe up link to a story on Instagram, you can do that from your mobile app. But if you're in Meta Business Suite and you're um, adding your stories there, it won't actually allow you to put that link in unless you've got 10,000 followers on Instagram. So just be aware of that. Hopefully they'll get around and get that sorted soon. Now, Instagram stories um, support food orders and lead gen as well. Uh, And this is where you can tap to add a sticker or enter your lead gen form or a food ordering app. Now, it does depend on which country you're in um, and who those vendors are. So in the UAE, for example, we're looking at Chat Food, Deliveroo, Talabat and Zomato. Uh, Whereas in the UK, we're looking um, again at Chat Food, Deliveroo, Flip Dish, Just Eat, Loilap, Ritual and Uber Eats. Um, In the sources and reference section of the slide deck, I have actually added the link there so you can check what country you're in um, and who supports that for you. So if you have... um, If you're posting on Instagram, it's important to um, remember that the number of recent interactions is a major ranking signal for the algorithm. So it's really important to post at a time when you're going to get the most engagement. And if you go in through your Instagram app um, or through the meta analytics, you can start seeing what times are more effective for your audiences. If you don't have that data straight away, then uh, as a rule of thumb, the best time for a restaurant to post on Instagram would be sort of around the times that people are sort of getting hungry. So around 9am, sort of between noon and one and sort of like evening time around 8pm. Now, if you've got a high performing um, organic post on Instagram, on Instagram, you can actually boost these now to a wider audience directly from the Instagram app, which is quite helpful. Um, And you can also use product tagging, voice messaging and uh, sharing contact directly with people to help you start building your community and keep people engaged. Um, On Instagram, what we're starting to see is um, more sort of authentic content coming onto the platform. So it's important to use a balance of both styled shots and authentic photos as well. Now, carousel posts do actually have the highest engagement of any type of media currently um, on Instagram. And that's despite the... um, the focus that they've put on reels. So carousels are great ways to sort of show different sort of combinations of like your starters, your mains, desserts, or, you know, perhaps special meals that you've got going on. So do have a look at how you can use more carousel posts in your marketing. So question two, what percentage of all Instagram users follow a business on the platform? Is that 70%, 80% or 90%? 
So what percentage of all Instagram users follow a business on the platform? 70%, 80% or 90%. So TikTok has kind of taken the world by storm over the last few years. Um, it now has over a billion active users worldwide with users spending well over an hour and a half um, on the platform every single day. Now, 60% um, of those people, uh, of those users are from Gen Z. So this is a fantastic demo, um, fantastic channel to engage that demographic. And the recipes and cooking category has had over 18 billion views. So if you'll pardon the pun, you can see there is an appetite for foodie content on TikTok. And in fact, the average engagement rate um, at 7.11% is six times higher than Instagram Reels. So if you look at, so Instagram these days is, I think is great for inspiring people, but if you wanna have more of that sort of conversation, then TikTok might be worth having a look at. <clears throat> now TikTok's appeal sort of stems from its short form videos, which often combine entertainment with information. And although this platform's already played an important role in social media trends over the last couple of years, we're likely to see a, a continued use um, in advertising and an increase in advertising this year. Um, so it allows restaurants to engage with their customers in a much more personal way. So this will help you build stronger relationships with your diners. Um, and as I mentioned, the platform is uh, particularly popular amongst young people with over half of the users aged between 16 and 24. So if you're focused on teens and 20 somethings, uh, you seriously need to consider TikTok advertising campaigns in your marketing mix. So TikTok's become one of the most popular social media platforms in the world and its user group base is expanding rapidly. Uh, in fact, it was the only platform to experience advertising growth in 2022. Um, and, you know, that's while competitors such as Instagram and, and Facebook saw flat or even declining sales compared to previous years. So the platform um, offers numerous features and tools for restaurants to reach their customers. Uh, and that includes live streaming, uh, the influencer collaborations, stories uh, and interactive content. So to capitalize on the popularity, um, the maximum video length has been increased up to 10 minutes on the platform. Um, hashtags can be used again to make sure that your posts are being sort of correctly categorized for people to find you. There's the option to upload branded stickers um, to sort of give your brand personality, as well as things like the sound library, the effects and the filters, and uh, the possibility to reply with video, which I think would be great for reviews um, as well. Now, really, um, from sort of being brand first, um, TikTok really is a creator-led platform, and in a, in a sense, it sort of transformed social media advertising. Uh, and as a result of that, it's continuing to receive steady investment, uh, despite some of the security concerns over the platform. And again, there's uh, some more details in the download for you on what those security concerns are. Okay, so in 2023, restaurants should focus on creating engaging content uh, that resonates with their audience. Um, and this includes creating short videos that showcase your food, uh, the atmosphere of your restaurant, um, as well as creating you know, interactive content such as polls and quizzes and, and Q&A videos. So, you know, do make sure that you've fully filled in all of the aspects of your um, TikTok profile and that there's enough imagery and videos to sort of represent your brand and, and your personality. Uh, keep your bio short and sweet. Um, do include a call to action um, and do add an emoji if that's appropriate to your brand voice. Um, popular forms of content on the platform are obviously videos that showcase the food, the polls, <clears throat> Uh, but it's also a great way to sort of show the human side of your business uh, if you have your staff getting involved in uh, TikTok challenges, for example. And of course, the interactive live streams are very popular. So again, you know, that could be a great way of um, interacting with chef for, for people that are at home. 
So question three, what percentage of teenagers worldwide have a TikTok account? Is that 47%, 57% or 67%? So that's what percentage of teenagers have a TikTok account? 47%, 57% or 67%? So LinkedIn is an incredibly powerful tool for businesses to market the restaurants um, in 2023. And with over 850 million users, um, it's become a powerful source of social media marketing, allowing restaurants to, contact, uh, to connect with potential customers as well as building their brand recognition. A recent statistics show that LinkedIn is continuing to grow in popularity um, and has actually, in fact, increased its engagement by over 22% in the last year. Now, the majority of users, so 71% of users, are from outside uh, of the US and Canada. And in fact, over 32 million of those come from the UK alone. Um, furthermore, over 63 million jobs have been posted on LinkedIn in just the last year. Um, and over 75% of B2B marketers now rate LinkedIn as their most effective social media platform. So looking at some of the new features, uh, LinkedIn articles can now be customized with SEO titles and descriptions. Um, it's likely that you've already created your headlines with search in mind. However, it is a nice new option to let you optimize your content specifically for the search engines now. Do take advantage of your showcase pages, particularly if you have um, different units diff in different locations. These can then all come under the main sort of umbrella parent brand. So that way you get the most of your local advertising as well as your brand advertising. Um, if you're looking to be a thought leader, then make sure you turn on LinkedIn's creator mode for your personal profile, uh, because that will unlock extra features such as uh, the newsletter, allowing people to follow you rather than sending connection requests. And it gives you access to tools such as LinkedIn Live. So LinkedIn's uh, now providing auto captions for video content. Uh, so this is further maximizing inclusion. Um, and in addition to helping people that have hearing difficulties, uh, you know, auto captions are great for people who like to watch their videos on silent. Now, additionally, LinkedIn users will now be able to turn on high contrast while watching videos on the LinkedIn app, and uh, this will adjust the colours for those people that have low vision. So good news there. Well done, LinkedIn. And uh, to help professionals make better, more informed purchasing decisions, LinkedIn's recently launched product pages, and that's going to help members explore products that meet their needs, connect with community experts, and of course, if interested, start to make purchases from the platform. Um, and finally, LinkedIn has now launched its own in-app post scheduling. So it's worth experimenting um, with this because with channels like Facebook and Instagram, uh, they tend to give you more reach when you use their native tools. So do, do have a little play with that as well. So the types of content that's popular um, on LinkedIn are polls. Uh, you know, people do like voting and they love a button. So do make sure to include polls. Um, to help expand your reach. Uh, the newsletters are very helpful. When people subscribe to your newsletters on LinkedIn, not only do they receive the newsletter in their inbox, but they'll also receive a notification from the platform. So that's a great way of keeping in touch with people. And of course, you can list your jobs, but this is also an area where you should be celebrating your brand values your team, and of course, promoting any B2B offerings you've got, such as catering, events, office lunches, etc. So true or false, LinkedIn is the oldest social media channel. So is that true or is that false? LinkedIn is the oldest social media channel. So YouTube remains the world's second largest search engine behind Google and enjoys over 2 billion monthly active users. 
Um, the actual watch time on YouTube is increasing. And we're starting to see um, that some people are watching well over 40 minutes a day. I certainly know that I do. Um, it remains an incredibly popular channel and over 500 hours of video um, is uploaded to YouTube every single minute. So it, it makes sense that you've got to start looking at how you can define your brand, what you stand for, what you look like, what you sound like to stand apart from a lot of the noise that's on this particular channel. But having said that, it is the preferred video platform for Gen Z. So it's well worth looking at. Now, YouTube short form content will remain a significant trend in 2023. And restaurants can use YouTube's augmented reality features to create more engaging experiences for their customers. So that's things like interactive menus where customers can view virtual versions of the dishes that they're interested in. Um, to virtual tours, and, and that can be especially helpful for customers who are unable to visit the restaurant in person. So, you know, think surprise family parties, wedding receptions, you know, they're the sorts of people that would really benefit from this type um, of content. Now, shoppable videos have been introduced, so restaurants can actually embed their products directly into a video, uh, and that then provides a link for the um, viewers to order or make a booking. So it makes it really, really easy for, for viewers to purchase the dishes that they see. And so this is more convenient, it's more efficient, and it's a more memorable experience for them. So we mentioned 360 videos um, in terms of uh, Facebook, and the same remains true here. You know, this type of video allows viewers to explore a restaurant, but it also allows them to explore dishes from all different angles. So, you know, do have a little play with that. Now, the YouTube Premiere feature, this allows you to upload a pre-recorded video and uh, schedule it for a future predetermined date and time. So again, you know, if you've got a video that you want to have a watch party with, this video could then be repurposed for a YouTube premiere. Um, and basically, when the video is ready to be viewed, all the viewers will be able to watch it simultaneously, and then they can comment in real time. So this is perfect for like cook-alongs and for growing your community. And finally, chapters um, can now be added to videos. And, you know, again, this is going to improve the old overall customer experience as it means that customers can skip to the parts of the video that they're most interested in. And of course, when you go into your YouTube analytics, you can see um, the sort of traffic wave of what parts of the videos are most important. So chapters will help you sort of speed up that analysis. So in terms of the content um, for YouTube, um, meet the team works really well. You know, show how your dishes are made, perhaps interview some of your suppliers. It's a great channel for menu launches, um, as well as working with influencers. Now, one of the areas I want to talk to you about is about connected TV ads. So by connected TV, I mean somebody that's got their plasma TV, their big TV, their smart TV connected into YouTube directly. Now, despite slowing growth in ad spending in 2023, connected TV is an area where we're seeing buyer investment increase. And it's actually expected to increase by double digits this year. Um, and it, you should also estimate that it will increase by another 14% next year. Now, one of the reasons that this is connected TVs um, are so appealing is that you're basically giving people the experience of a commercial at an absolute fraction of the price. So restaurants should really be taking advantage of, advantage of these ads on YouTube because it's highly targeted advertising. And as I say, it's at an absolute sort of fraction of the cost. And, you know, these are, again, it's great ways then to speak about any influencer collaborations or sizzle reels as well. So do have a look at that. So question five, what percentage of internet users watch online videos? Is that 77%, 89% or 95%? 
So what percentage of internet users watch online videos? Is that 77%, 89% or 95%? So Twitter gives restaurants the ability to connect with their customers in real time. It's a great channel to build brand awareness and to drive engagement. And it also provides a platform to showcase restaurant specials, menus and customer reviews. So while it's still a little bit shaky at the moment with the change in ownership, there are still 397 million active users on the platform. And 84% of those guys check in each week to see what's going on. Now, 39% of those users are aged between 25 and 34, 21% are 35 to 49, 17% 50 plus, and another 17% 18 to 24. So this really is a, a great channel to sort of reach some of your older demographic. Um, and in general, most people on Twitter do come from um, a college background um, in as far as education standards are concerned. So a lot of these guys are there to sort of talk about um, social issues, keep up with the news um, and the local communities as well. So in addition uh, to the blue tick, Twitter Blue offers a range of additional services for Twitter users. Uh, and that includes the ability to edit tweets up to 30 minutes after you've uh, posted them. Um, it also, when you when you go to tweet, it will give you 30 seconds before it actually um, sends to the platform so you can just double check that there's no spelling mistakes there. Uh, you can now bookmark folders, uh, you can have NFT profile pictures, um, and something I found really helpful is the top articles. So again, this is a Twitter blue um, feature, but with the top articles, you can see the most shared articles in your network. Um, and also the people that they're following as well. So it's a great way of identifying trending topics. Um, and of, and of, of course, then as well, uh, you've got the prioritised rankings in uh, conversations. So furthermore, uh, Blue allows Twitter users to upload videos up to an hour long and tweet up to 4,000 characters. So new subscriptions to Twitter Blue um, are currently available on the web um, on iOS and Android, and that's available in the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, the UK, Saudi Arabia, France, Germany, Italy, Portugal, Spain, India, Indonesia, and Brazil, um, with plans to expand. Um, spaces are a great way of having audio conversations on Twitter, so where sort of Clubhouse hasn't really taken off as much as it would like to have done. Spaces is kind of picking up some of that slack. So they're public, which means that anybody can join these conversations um, as a listener. And that includes people that don't follow you. Um, and you can share uh, links to the audio spaces um, on your social channels or in messages as well. So up to 13 people, that includes the host and two co-hosts, uh, can speak in a space at any given time. Now, by default, the space will always be set to um, only people that you invite to speak. However, that can be changed during the conversation, much the same way as you'd manage a webinar if you wanted a listener to uh, be able to share their thoughts. Now, hosts can schedule a, a space up to 30 days in advance and up to 10 uh, scheduled spaces. So, you know, that's great if you've got um, a particular season on, for example, um, or, you know, perhaps you've got like a book club that meets um, at your restaurant or something like that, you know, start thinking about how you could use these spaces to build your local community. So tweet threads, um, these are all the linked tweets they've started um, sort of really picking up in um, popularity they will also help you expand your reach on twitter uh, of course if you've got twitter blue you can actually now uh, post up to 4000 characters rather than the 280 uh, but i do quite i quite like the tweet tweet threads um, and the good news is that if you're using buffer to schedule your social media posts um, they actually support uh, tweet threads now 
Um, also, do take, make sure that you're having a look at TweetDeck, which is uh, Twitter's built-in system. And that basically gives you, it shows you streams. And it's similar to the sort of Hootsuite layout. And what that means is that you can monitor messages, notifications, uh, scheduled tweets, social listening streams, etc., from one dashboard. So um, with Twitter, you know, do make sure that you've got all of your details optimized. Um, add your opening hours to your bio. So if people are expecting customer service, then you've managed their expectations. Um, and set up lists to follow target accounts, such as your influencers, your journalists, your suppliers, etc. cetera. Um, now, popular types of content will include the threads, um, polls, again, you know, anything that's got a button, people love taking part in those. Um, your images and videos, your FAQs, um, weather themed updates, you know, a bit chilly this morning, warm up with um, social media holidays, you'll always find, you know, it might be National Pumpkin Day or, um, you know, Salted Caramel Day. And again, you know, if you've got something on your menu that can get involved with that, um, then that's a great way of reaching a potentially new audience. Um, and finally, news jacking. So by that, what I mean is, um, if there has been a story in the news that affects your local area, your industry, uh, or even if it's just a fight over where the, if the cream goes on first on scones, which it does, by the way, it's not jam first, um, then these are the sorts of things that you can then start adding your own commentary to um, and your own value to, uh, to sort of continue that conversation. So question six, what percentage of Twitter users say it's essential for businesses to provide customer support on Twitter? Is that 55%, 70% or 85%? So what percentage of Twitter users say it's essential for businesses to provide customer support on Twitter? 55%, 70% or 85%? On now to Pinterest. Now, statistics from 2022 onwards have revealed that Pinterest is used by over 400 million people and 80% of its users are women. Now, Pinterest users are also more likely to purchase items uh, than users of other social media platforms. So it becomes an ideal platform for restaurants. So um, of the posts made, which are called pins, over 240 billion pins have been saved on the platform and they're spread out across 4 billion boards. And what we've been seeing is a year-on-year -year increase in the number of boards that are being um, created on a monthly basis. Now, a lot of people refer to Pinterest as a visual search engine. I prefer to think of it as a lifestyle search engine. Um, because one of the main reasons for the predominantly female audience is that, you know, we're using the channel to find inspiration for home, travel, gifting, you know, fashion, eating um, and experiences. Uh, and the way that the Pinterest algorithm works is it curates recommended content for users based on their interests and what they pin. So it works by tracking a user's browser activity on the platform analyzes the types of pins that they've interacted with and then recommends similar content. So it's not as time driven as the other channels are, which means, you know, this is a great place for evergreen content and for building backlinks to your website and other social channels as well. Um, additionally, there are shoppable pins. Um, a lot of people just have a hobby of digital scrapbooking. Um, but it's a great way to identify emerging trends and you can engage with your audience by repinning posts from customers, suppliers and local partners as well. So restaurants can optimise their Pinterest profile by creating different boards that are related to the restaurant, such as um, our food or our recipes. You could get quite granular with that, with vegan options, wedding, burgers, mocktails, etc. Um, do make sure that you're creating attractive cover images um, for your boards and do make sure that you filled out everything in your bio and your profile pit photos as well. Um, in terms of the imagery on this channel, you want to make sure that it's all sort of magazine style imagery. So it's there to sort of evoke 
um, an emotion. And I've just realized I've spelled imagery wrong. Goodness, ignore that. <laughs> okay, so question seven. Um, what percentage of pinners said that they discovered a new brand or product on Pinterest? Is that 66%, 77% or 87%? So what percentage of pinners say that they discovered a new brand or product on Pinterest? So that's 66%, 77% or 87%. Now, while chat, Snapchat isn't as big as the other major, play, major players um, in social media, it does remain a critical connection tool for many younger users. Now, Snapchat has around 265 million daily active users, and they spend around 30 minutes on the platform every single day. But these guys are five times more likely to be students than anyone else using the app. So if you're looking to uh, target students, then this is a channel you should be considering. Um, and that, of course, then allows a restaurant to build stronger relationships with their audience. And it offers a vast array of features that can help restaurants stand out from the competition, such as customized filters, creative lenses, um, and more. Now, Snapchat Trends is very useful because this allows you to explore topics that your audience is interested in. Um, and there's also additional insight that gets pulled in from Nielsen and Data Logics. Uh, so that can deepen your understanding of the key trends and interests in your target market. Now, augmented reality lenses are a great way to create engaging and interactive experiences for customers. Uh, and that could be, again, things like virtual tools and product demos. So there is the Lens Studio that's built into Snapchat to help you create those. Now, Snapchat offers an integrated mobile commerce platform, um, and that can allow restaurants to sell their products and services directly to customers. One of the trends that we've seen in recent years is instead of people wanting to wear merch from their favorite bands, we're starting to see an increase in people wanting merch from their favorite restaurants. So this could be a cool outlet for that. Um, and of course, ephemeral content. It's all about creating content that's here today, gone tomorrow. And, you know, restaurants can use this to create a sense of urgency and to sort of drive special offers. But you could also use it for cool things like um, secret menu items as well. So um, make sure that you've claimed your business profile. Even if you haven't decided to use Snapchat, yes, it, it's best to protect your brand by claiming profiles on all the channels and then do make sure that you've requested verification um, by adding your restaurant to snap maps that will then pull in the reviews that you've got from TripAdvisor. So in terms of your content have a look at what you can do in terms of augmented reality make the most of video content you know drive fear of missing out with ephemeral content um, and when you're doing your ads, 64% um, of people on Snapchat actually listen with the sound on. So this is great for audio branding um, and, as, as I say, for that younger demographic where you want to make more of an impact. So what percentage of Snapchat users watch Snapchat stories every day? Is that 50%, 60% or 70%? So what percentage of Snapchat users watch Snapchat stories every day? 50%, 60% or 70%. Now, Google Maps is one of the most popular search and discovery tools for diners. And that's both locally and, uh, you know, for locals and people visiting. Now, with the ability to provide extensive listing maps and reviews, uh, Google Maps provides restaurants with, you know, a targeted and cost efficient way to reach their target audience. So we can see that there's 11 billion monthly active users. 70% um, of people searching for restaurants do so within five miles of that restaurant. But 50% of searches are now coming from voice enabled devices. Now, this is really interesting. It's been something I've mentioned um, a few times in my webinars. When you're speaking to your voice searches, they only come back with one suggestion. So 
if you want to get ahead of competition, you have got to optimize for voice search. So that means thinking about the questions that people would ask their voice assistants and how you would then create content to answer that. Um, and also then we look at how many people are actually relying on those reviews and 80% of people are relying on online reviews when making a booking decision. So it's really important that you've claimed your Google My Business listing um, and that you're responding to those reviews. So Google Maps, it's becoming more competitive with more restaurants being added. And of course, they've got to then post engaging content and stand out from the crowd. So it's important that your profile is accurate and up to date and also optimized for search engines. Um, you secondly, you know, make sure that you're uploading regularly uh, high quality images, videos and text updates. And if you want to increase engagement and reach more customers, then you should take advantage of features such as the owner questions and answers and the location tags. Um, and that can help you differentiate, differentiate your brand depending on what questions and answers you pop on there. So when it comes to engagement tactics, you should consider running campaigns or promotions on Google Maps. Um, this is particularly good for offers and um, perhaps like, you know, seasonal discounts or special offers. Uh, but again, as I say, do make sure that you post regular updates um, and reply to customer reviews. And, uh, you know, also have a look at what content you can design specifically uh, for your local audience. So on to question nine, how many online reviews now come from Google Maps? Is it 40%, 45% or 50%? That's how many online reviews now come from Google Maps. Is that 40%, 45% or 50%? So on to uh, the websites then. So over 50% of restaurants do have a website. Um, that's not enough, really. It should be 100%. Um, but 80% of those 50% do actually have a mobile ready um, website. So that's good news. Slightly less good news is that the average restaurant website is taking around 6.2 seconds to load. So, you know, do have a look at how um, your site speed is performing because that will affect customer experience and your Google rankings. So there are more than three and a half billion searches every month for restaurants near me. So, you know, if you don't have a website, you are missing out on traffic. And over 60% of restaurant websites don't contain a call to action. So people behave online much the same way they do in real life. And if you've ever had an area in your restaurant that says, please wait to be seated, most people will wait. If you don't have that little sign, sometimes people are confused on what they need to do next. So this is why you need to have calls to action. Um, is to just sort of signpost them where you want them to go. Um, and that improves the overall experience. So some of the um, elements that you should be looking at these days are things like interactive menus. So I know a lot of people still use PDFs, but, you know, the disadvantage of that is it's not doing you any favours on your SEO. And, you know, there's an increase in people who want to understand um, calorie counts, ingredients, sustainability. So really an interactive menu is the best way for that. Make sure that you're using different landing pages for special events um, or special offers. Uh, do include careers, blogs and news and an event calendar. And of course, make sure that you've got any galleries and videos um, of your food there. Um, and finally, make sure that you're capturing first party data, because a lot of people like to be kept updated uh, by email. And as I mentioned earlier, you can use this, the email information to upload as custom audiences um, to Facebook so you can reach people on Facebook and Instagram. So when you're optimizing your website, make sure you've got your menus, your galleries, your calendars um, together and the types of content people are looking for, special offers, newsletter signups. Uh, you could embed your Instagram and Twitter feeds um, so that people can sort of see, um, you know, you could perhaps replace a gallery with that. And then that way 
your embedded feed will do the job of a gallery for you. Um, and also the website's a great place to talk about company culture and, of course, any competitions that you're running. So question 10, what percentage of dining research is done on mobile before a diner visits a restaurant? Is it 79%, 89% or 99%? So that's what percentage of dining research is done on mobile before visiting a restaurant? 79%, 89% or 99%? So um, the final channel we're going to look at today is newsletter and a staggering 347 billion emails are sent and received every day worldwide. Now, 80% of business leaders say that consumers spend more when their experience is personalised. So do make sure that you're taking advantage of those personalisation tags. And 69% of email recipients will report emails as spam simply because of the subject lines. So if you're having problems, then it could be that your subject lines aren't doing, doing the job. Um, and of course, smartphone users prefer to receive uh, brand comms via email. So as I mentioned, you know, do look at the personalization. Um, make sure that you're adding tags so that you can sort of send um, you know, granular campaigns. So again, vegan, vegetarian, gluten free, cocktail lover, mocktail lover, etc. Um, have a look at the different funnel stages. So you know, your email campaign could be designed to get people to sign up for a free slice of pizza. To, you know, for your launch event, um, or it could be personalised offers that you're sending to people who are highly engaged with your brand as a way to reward them. Um, do look at adding in automations where possible. So, um, you know, welcoming people to your newsletter um, or if they've stopped placing an order online, you know, perhaps send an abandoned cart email to ask if there's anything you could do to improve that. Um, as I mentioned, you can segment your audiences so that you've got much more tailored uh, campaigns and do make... Um, you know, do make sure that you're reading your analytics to see what's working. Um, you know, what are the best days, best times to send, what subject lines are working for you, what's what's the content that's causing clicks. Now, typically for restaurants, um, the best thing to do is to stick to a consistent schedule. Um, make sure that your domain hasn't been flagged as spam. Don't mark it to cold lists. That's the fastest way to get flagged as spam. Um, and do make sure that you're protecting your diner's privacy. You can run tests to find the best days, times and subject lines. Um, and as I say, have a look at, you know, creating different campaigns to welcome new subscribers as well as special and seasonal offers. So final question of the quiz, what percentage of diners want to hear from restaurants via email at least once a month? Is that 48%, 58% or 68%? So what percentage of diners want to hear from restaurants via email at least once a month? Is that 48%, 58% or 68%? So we've looked at a lot of different channels today uh, and it can seem quite daunting. So I've put together some tips here on how you can deliver an omni-channel experience to your diners. So the first thing to do really is to define your brand tone and your visual identity. What colour schemes are you using? What fonts? What graphics? You know, those are the sorts of things that help people identify your brand across each different channel. Have a look at who your profile Tusk customers are, um, you know, understand which channels they're using. So, for example, they might search for a restaurant on Google and then go to Instagram to see what people are saying. Uh, they then might go on Snapchat to ask some live questions. So it's important for you to understand how your customers are using each of those channels. Um, so the best thing to do really is sort of create your target personas and map their journey and that's going to help you then understand how people are going to become aware of your restaurant become interested make a purchase decision and then stay as a repeat customer 
So you can also use um, artificial intelligence and canned responses so that you've got consistency in customer support across channels. And where possible, do use a centralized dashboard um, for your analytics so that you can see how all of your campaigns are working together. Where possible, you should be using a CRM to gather your customer data and preferences so that you can segment them and send them highly targeted offers in the future. Um, and it's always worth creating standard operating procedures for communications guidelines, FAQs, um, complaint handling, reviews management, and uh, the processes for collaborations as well. So looking at the key takeaways then of today's session, Facebook remains an important channel for restaurants, um, but you can take advantage of their tools to make sure that you're offering a great customer service on the channel. Um, check the integrations on Instagram with your third party delivery vendors to encourage ordering from the app. And make sure you're balancing styled and authentic content on Instagram. On TikTok, embrace short form video. And on LinkedIn, use this to attract top talent and source supplies. Make sure that you get your team to um, get involved with your page because um, your team can invite people to follow the page as well. So it's a great way of building your presence on LinkedIn. Um, make sure that your YouTube videos have got keyword rich video titles and descriptions uh, so that they turn up in searches and take advantage of the um, impact and cost savings of connected TV ads. Um, for Twitter, do consider subscribing to Twitter Blue to unlock the additional features. Um, as I say, use your Twitter profile as a customer support channel, so make sure your opening hours are on there. For Pinterest, make sure that you're using high quality magazine style imagery and repin re frequently to grow your audience. Snapchat's brilliant for reaching students and don't forget to add the audio in your ads to boost brand impact. For Google Maps, make sure that you're uploading high quality images and videos and you can differentiate your restaurant using the owner Q&As and how you respond to reviews. Also make sure that your, your website is mobile friendly with clear calls to action on what you want your customers to do. Segment your newsletter audiences so that you can send more targeted campaigns. Make sure you've got the personalization tags in there to make that feel, you know, to build that emotional connection. Create bio personas for each of your main customer groups and map out what their journey looks like. From there, you can then start working out what content you need for each stage of that journey, which can then be scheduled out, analyzed and implemented, um, and then ultimately scaled. So here are the quiz results. So, six billion people are expected to use social media by 2027. 90% of Instagram users follow a business on the platform. And 67% of teenagers have a TikTok account. Uh, and it's true that LinkedIn is the oldest social media channel, having launched in 2003, so celebrating its 20th year this year. 95% of internet users watch online videos, with YouTube being the most popular platform. And 85% of Twitter users say it's essential for businesses to provide customer support on Twitter. 77% of pinners said that they've discovered a new brand or product on Pinterest. And over 70% of Snapchat users watch Snapchat stories every day. 50% of online reviews are now generated from Google Maps. And 89% of dining research is done on mobile before visiting a restaurant. And finally, 68% of diners want to hear from restaurants via email at least once a month. So that's the quiz. That's the webinar. Over to some Q&A now. And uh, I look forward to answering your questions.